Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. You see yourself on the side, brother? Are you so-called, what's your nationality? Do you know? Would you call yourself or identify yourself with being black or African American? Huh? Black? So you would be from the tribe of Judah, yes, right. according to the Bible. You are God's chosen people. You are an Israelite. We are the real biblical Jews, according to the Bible. But you know what happened to us? Slavery for breaking God's commandments. And guess what happened in slavery? Black, African-American, Hispanic, Puerto Rican. Our last names today go back to our slave masters. You see what I'm saying? Listen to this scripture. Read again from the top. He showeth his word unto Jacob. You know who Jacob is? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. These are his 12 sons and who they are on the earth today. So it said he showeth his word unto who? Unto Jacob. No, the Chinese. Unto Jacob. No, the East Indians. He showeth his word unto Jacob. And his, he gave his commandments unto Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. He gave the Bible to us, to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel is what that's saying. Read. His statute. His statutes. What is a statute? A statute is a law or a commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Honor thy mother and thy father. Those are commandments or statutes. Okay? He showed his statutes. Read. And his judgment. And what's a judgment? What's a judgment? You got kids? Now, if you give your kids an order, right? If you give your kids an order and they go against that order, what's going to happen? You're going to whoop them or give them some type of disciplinary action. That is called a judgment for doing what? Disobeying the statute that you set. You see what I'm saying? So read it again from the top. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his laws, his statutes and his judgment, and the penalties for breaking those laws unto Israel, unto these people on this side right here. That's, right. That's why it's Breonna Taylor's going on. That's why George Floyd is going on right. over and over and over and over again. Why? Because we are disobeying the statutes, the word that God gave us. What? You understand? Read. He have not dealt so with any nation. What does the scripture say? He have not dealt so with any nation. And he never dealt or never deals with any other nation outside of his own. That's right. So that one verse alone, the Christian church needs to be blue the hell up. Right. Because that one verse alone completely goes against the whole ideology that's being taught to us today, that God loves everybody. Right. Because he said he don't deal with no other nation. You understand what I'm saying? Psalms one night, what was I at before? Psalms 119 and 66. You know how to get the kingdom of heaven, bro? Do you know how to get the kingdom of heaven? Are you looking? Okay, let me ask you a question. What do you think about what's going on with our people today? All that's happening in the earth today. There's a lot going on. Could you agree? Right. Zechariah 4 and 6. Right. So you both said some the same words. Y'all both said that first and foremost, we lost. We lost to, we have to first understand that we are lost to our, our identity. What's your nationality? I don't get off But at the end of the day, if I had a, 10 Chinese people right here and I asked them their nationality, each one of them would tell me the exact same answer, that they're Chinese. If I had six East Indians right here, they would all say the same thing. But I'm, I'm showing you the confusion. You don't know? What's your nationality? He said black. You see where the confusion is at? Before we can try to overcome and get anywhere, 
we have to understand who we are as a nation of people. That's if you don't understand that, you're going to be like a hands on the wheel. You're going to continue to go the way we've been going. There's no way we could get somewhere and he say, you say one thing, he say something different, I say something different, he say something different. That's confusion. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? What, what you got? Exactly. So about that overcome, I'm going to show you how we're going to overcome because economics is not the way. Because think about it. If you're not built up spiritually and following this word, how can we overcome economically and the scriptures say thou shalt not steal? You may have a covetous spirit on you and be dipping your hand into our business. You see, so we can't deal with each other on that level unless we get spiritual and keep the commandments first. You see what I'm saying? Read this. The book of Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might. Not by what? Not by might. So our people, some, some of our people try to overcome by might, meaning a fighting power. Like, it's a group that uh, like militia groups that try to really bear arms and think we gonna overcome by fighting. The Black Panthers tried that. And you see what happened, we failed. Because you have to understand the scriptures. These people are the descendants of Esau. You, Isaac, and, uh, Isaac had Jacob and Esau. What was Esau blessing? He was blessed with the art of war. He said, you shall live by the sword. So we, 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 this is a spiritual fight. We can't fight this man. He, he could just turn the wood off. Yeah. When we run out of bullets, where we gonna go? So that's by might a physical fight. We cannot do that with these people. You understand? So the scriptures say, not by might. Read. Nor by power. Nor by power. Right. The power is going into that. Also going into political. You see what I'm saying? Because you try to get power or gain some type of uh, uh, leverage in society through politics as well. So not by power. Not by voting. Not by fighting. Read. But by my spirit. What is the spirit? Give me the spirit. So we're going to overcome by the spirit. What's the spirit? You see what I'm saying? One man might say the spirit is comedic science. Another brother might say the spirit is Islam. Another brother might say the spirit is the Christian church. That's not the spirit. I'm going to show you exactly what the spirit is on how we shall begin to overcome. Right? Read what you got. This is the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. So the scriptures say it is the spirit that quickeneth. The word quickeneth means to change. So Christ is saying it is the spirit that is going to change. Right? But the flesh profiteth nothing. Us trying to fight carnally is going to profit nothing. Right? Us trying to march and vote and all of these carnal things is not going to profit us at all. Right? Read. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. What's the spirit? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are light. So Christ said, the spirit is what? The words that he spoke unto us, which is what? The commandments. The commandments. I'm going to give you a prime example. But our people and our mind, we, we think, nah. God already told us. So they said, he said, the spirit is what? The words. The words, right? Didn't he say, thou shalt not kill? So if we applied that one law, that one word he spoke, what would be the crime way between black on blacks? You see what I'm saying? But our people and our man think we got a better solution. That can't be the way. We got to do this. It's economics. It's, let me go to the mosque. Let me worship Ross. Matter of fact, nah, brother. Comedic science, brother. Nah, brother. Egyptology, brother. Nah, brother. Kim it, brother. And we all, that's why we lost, because we not hearkening unto thus say the Lord, and it's so simple. Yes, right. It's very simple. He say my commandments are not grievous. You understand? So at the end of the day, bro, you got to understand that you are an Israelite and that you must keep God's commandments. That's the only way. The only way. Hebrews 10 and 7. Go ahead. Where is that? Where did Christ say that? What is grace? Give me, give me, give me grace. Give me grace. What is grace? Hold on, bro. I want you to hear this. I, I, I'm still here with you. Give me some, bro. I'm still here with you. I'm still here with you. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. No, no. We, 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 we're learning. Scriptures say do all things to the edifying. We learn it. That's what we out here for. Okay. So Jesus, who did Jesus die for? The nation of Israel, right? So are we under grace right now? Yes. But what is grace supposed to do? 
what is grace? For example, I miss my bill and they give me a grace period to pay my bill. If they give me a grace period, I still got to pay the bill. They're just giving me time to get my money right so that I could pay. Right. You see what I'm saying? So grace with God is just a certain period of time in which he allows us to get ourselves right. That's right. Grace don't mean I can just go and do what the hell I want to do. Read. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. So what we teaching, we're teaching our people what is grace. Because it is taught to us today that we are under grace. Yes, we are under grace. But what is grace supposed to teach us in our communities? Does grace mean I continue to get drunk? Does grace mean I continue to whore out my women, my sisters in my community, in my nation? Does grace supposed to teach me to continue to eat pork? Continue to cook on God's Sabbath day? No. What is grace supposed to teach our people? Read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. So grace brings salvation, meaning us being saved from this current condition. Grace does bring that, but how? Read. Have appeared to all men. All men of Israel. Read. Teaching us. Grace is supposed to do what? Teaching us. Doing what? Teaching us. Doing what? Teaching us. Teaching us what? That denying ungodliness. So grace is supposed to teach us to do what? Denying ungodliness. Deny ungodliness. What is ungodliness? I'm going to make it plain. Ungodliness is sin. Sin. Thou shall not kill. Killing is ungodliness. Eating pork is ungodliness. Sex outside of marriage is ungodliness. Idolatry, which goes into the Christian church, the Muslim mosque, all of these different doctrines and philosophies is idolatry. That is ungodliness. We got a flyer? Let's get this brother a flyer. Read on. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. And give us a call, brother. And worldly lust. Read. We should live soberly. So the scriptures say in grace we're supposed to do what? Live soberly. So does that mean right? Does that mean you can get drunk? Even though we under grace, can we get drunk? Because the scriptures say do what? Live soberly. And we're supposed to live soberly. This is grace. This is what grace is supposed to teach you. Read. Righteously. That we're supposed to live what? Righteously. Meaning keeping the commandments. That's right. All of them. Only commandment that we're not supposed to keep is animal sacrifice. Why? Because Christ came and died as our sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God. So, because before Christ, how do we get forgiveness for sins? Yes, we did with Moses through animal sacrifice. Christ came to fulfill that sacrifice. That's why when John the Baptist seen him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Right. So only thing we not supposed to be doing is animal sacrifice. Right. But all the other commandments are still in complete effect. Right. That's right. And you know the obviousness of that? Laquan McDonald, Sandra Bland, George, you see those? The judgments are still happening for our, for our sins. You know why the judgment's still happening? Because it's still sin involved. We not living in grace. We not living righteously, according to the scriptures. Read. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So grace is supposed to teach us to live soberly, godly, righteously. When? In this present world. No, in the kingdom, in the future. In this present world. No, when Christ come back, we supposed to do that. In this present world. Meaning right now brother. Right now we're supposed to keep these commandments and get ourselves right. Because once the grace period is up and Christ come back then what's going to happen? What's going to happen when Christ come back? There you go. Yes. 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 When Christ come back, he's coming back to bring death and destruction for all of those that's not keeping his commandments. Why? Because he gave you time to get yourself right. Amos 9 and 10. Amos 9 and 10. You see what I'm, So what you must learn now is the commandments, brother. I'm going to give you a commandment. Drop that. Leviticus. 
Leviticus. Give me a commandment. Remember, what is grace supposed to teach you? Th thank you. Do they teach that in the church? You see what I'm saying? Because what you must realize is that we, the Lord has sent us out here to teach our people. Okay? That's all we're supposed to do is come out here and teach you the word of God. The true way is supposed to be taught, be taught in these last days. So it's not no coincidence. The scriptures say a man's goings is of the Lord. It's not no coincidence that you're standing here right now hearing these things. Okay? Because now you marked. You're marked. So you're either going to apply these things and continue to learn more, or you're going to continue to go about the way that, that you've been living, that we've been living as a people. You understand? So don't let, don't take this message in vain. Apply these things. So you must come. We have to see you at the school. We have to see you there. We have to see you begin to learn and keep these commandments. That's the only way you're going to be saved. That's if not, you're going to die here in America by thermal nuclear fire. Right. Bombs are going to hit this place. That's in the Bible. Read. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. So this is a commandment that you must start keeping in grace, in this present world, soberly, righteously, godly. This is a commandment that you must keep. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So our men, we are not supposed to make baldness upon our head. Meaning I'm not supposed to take a razor and shave my head bald. Like, like Michael Jordan, Tyrese, uh, give me another one. Floyd Mayweather, Montel. The scriptures say what? They shall not make baldness upon their head. Because you made in the image of who? And what, what's his hair like? Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool, brother. So essentially, you breaking the commandment, but symbolically, what are you showing? What are you doing to yourself? You spitting in God's face saying, I hate your image. I hate myself. When you shaving your hair bald. Because you have the hair and the image of God, brother. That's right. You are a literal God on this earth That's when you right. keep your father's commandments. Right. But when we disregard his commandments, we drop down low. Right. Slaves. But you was made to be the God of this earth. When you read about Adam, how, that, that's you. But we not in that position. Why? Because of sin. So get your image back, brother. We not supposed to be shaving our heads bald. Read it again. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So we, that's one law, right? And I see you, you keeping that. Don't shave your head bald. That's a commandment. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shall they do what? Shave off the corner of their beard. You see that? That's why I went there. That's why I went there. So in your repentance, what must you do? What must you do? Bruh, don't, it's okay, bruh. Nothing, it's okay, meaning we not judge, we can't bring, we out here to help you, bruh. We, we want you to repent. So when you hearing this, what must you do? You must start doing what? Gr growing, what do you see on every man's face up here? Why do you think that's up? Look at him, look around. Because, read the scripture again. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So you have to stop shaving your beard off. That's a commandment of God. Right. Read. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. And what is that cutting in your flesh talking about? It start with a T. Tat. Cuttings in your flesh. Tattoos. Brands. Yeah, that's a law, a commandment. Because when you do that, you're dishonoring your, your body. You see what I'm saying? That's like you're not supposed to make any cuttings in your flesh. So, in your repentance, if you got tattoos, repent from it. But your beard, you got to start growing that. Right? right? I'm going to show you another commandment. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know, that the head of every man is Christ. So what we read now in the book of Corinthians, which is written by Paul, who was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. Okay, who are the modern day so-called West Indians, Trinidad, Tobago, Jamaica, Baham Bahamas. Our people in that area over there are the tribe of Benjamin. Saul, you read about in the Bible, were from the tribe of Benjamin. 
But our people, we read the Bible and we don't, we don't know who these people are today. It's us. So today, Paul would be known as a so-called Jamaican. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. Okay, so read it again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So, and what he's explaining is the hierarchy. The hierarchy or the divine order of life. Because in society today is taught what? 50 50. You get a flyer, bro? Man, uh, woman, thou art loose. The women rule the household today, and the man is the one quiet, the one in subjection. But that's not the order of God. That's not how God set it up in this place. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Our brothers have to come back to being the gods and the men that the Most High God made you to be. That's right. He did not make you to be 50-50 with no woman. When the scriptures say she was made for you. Right. But you know why? You know why she not following you? Because you have not righteously stood up and be the man that God called you to be. That's right. In true righteousness. I ain't talking about that effeminate spirit in the church. That's not the spirit that's over here. I'm talking about Christ. David, Solomon, Abraham, who was warriors of the Most High God. That's right. So we righteously and boldly come out here and speak these words. That black man, it is time for you to stand up and take back your nationality. Take back your true identity. Stop being ran in your own household. Jeez. Put your household in order. Matter of fact, give me that. Uh, uh, hold that. Give me Genesis 18, 18. I'm going to show you our forefathers. And, these, and, and what we, we're not coming out here to blast and tear down our people. This is exhortation for you to examine yourself and get yourself right by these scriptures. So let's examine our forefather Abraham. Was he 50-50 with his wife? Did he, was he getting ruled by his children? Did he not have his household in subjection? No. We're going to see what the Bible says. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 18 and verse 18. Bring it out. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the Israelites in the earth that were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth in slavery. That's how all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because we are scattered in every nation and receive salvation and deliverance out of every nation. Read. For I know him. For God said, oh, I know Abraham. What's your name, bro? Earl. So you got to see yourself in these scriptures. Oh, I know Earl. Read. That he will command his children. What are you going to do? Command his children. No, his children can do what the hell they want to do. He will command his children. So black man, it's time for you to stand up and command your children. Right. Take care of your children in your household and command them after the scriptures. Stop commanding them in Christian church. Stop commanding them in Islam. Stop commanding them in BET, MTV, housewives. Stop commanding them in television and command them after the, the scriptures. Read. He will command his children and his household and his what? And his household. And his household, meaning his children, his wife, his servants, everybody in his house. He going to command. Why? Because he is the man and the Lord of that house. That's right. That's right. So this is the understanding that you black man must get take back in 2020. In these last days. Right. Stop being weak. Stop being effeminate. Stop being damn all 50-50 with your woman and command your household. That's as right. the scriptures say. And if, no, if, if it's anybody in your household that don't want to do what the scriptures say, then guess what? That tells you where they lie with God. Read. And his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. So you're going to command your household in the way of the Lord, brothers. You're going to command your wife in the way of the Lord. And she's going to be willing to submit and follow you when you command her in the way of the Lord. But she ain't following you because you ain't put back on your righteous spirit. You ain't commanding her the right way. Look at our man out here. We already talked about this, like little children out here playing, cooking, singing, and dancing. We in the middle of injustice and pandemic, and we come out here playing music, laughing, dancing, singing, playing around. And you wonder why the black woman do not want to follow the black man. Because the black man is out here smoking weed, partying, drinking, playing the hell around. 
Bring it out. When the scriptures say that you're supposed to command your household in the way of the Lord, black man. So if you want the black woman to get in order, you get in order. That's right. You get in order as an Israelite after the commandments of the Bible. You can't get in order with the Christian church. You can't get in order in politics. You cannot get in order in the Muslim mosque. You got to get in order, thus says the Lord. Read. To do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he have spoken of him. So you supposed to instruct your house in the ways of the Lord to do judgment and justice. To do judgment and justice. Where's the justice in the black community? Where's the judgment in the black community? The justice, the accountability amongst each other. If black lives matter, why is it a drug dealer out here on every single corner and don't nobody say nothing? If black lives matter, yeah, you get money, but guess what? Money gonna burn in the end, so you better repent. Yeah, I know, you better repent, brother. So like I was saying, if black lives really matter, why is it so much black on black crime? If black lives and Hispanic lives really matter, why are we number one in abortion? If black lives really matter, why is there so many single parent households? When the scriptures say marriage is honorable. Bring it out. If black lives really matter, it's time for you to repent and start keeping the commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.